Thank you, Vera. Uh, excellencies, heads of state and government, former heads of state, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the, the UN uh, Deputy UN Secretary General Amina Mohammed. First, I want to thank President Kenyatta for hosting the AGRF Summit and to acknowledge the hard work of Dr. Kadivata and her team and the leadership of His Excellency Hayer Mariam Desalen as the chair of the AGRF Partners Group. Now to your question. Food systems are key to achieving the SDGs, DGs, first of all. 70% of African adults work in agriculture and agribusiness. If they aren't doing well, then Africa isn't doing well. More than 35% of the world's hungry are in Africa. Clearly, we need a transformation in how our food systems are organized. We must also ensure that everyone has access to the food they need on an equitable and affordable basis. For Africa, this means importing less food because we are capable of growing more of what we consume here on our continent. We must take advantage of the African continental free trade area to trade the produce with one another. That is a big business opportunity for all of us. We also need to be frank that a fairer global trade regime for food products is necessary. There needs to be a level playing field. Food systems contribute around one-third of global carbon emissions, but the effects of climate change on rainfall patterns and the desertification in Africa are already being felt. For Africa, the stakes are very high when it comes to climate change. Our continent's voice should be clearly heard at COP26 in November and beyond. The United Nations Food Systems Summit later this month is an opportunity to commit to the actions necessary to transform food systems in line with the SDGs. The African Union Development Agency, NEPAD, has facilitated an African common position in advance of the summit in line with Agenda 2063. Africa's solutions will be pursued in five tracks. One, nutrition and school feeding. Two, supporting local markets and supply chains and trade within Africa. Three, increase financing for agriculture to 10% of public expenditure. Four, help smallholder farmers, especially women. And five, expand social safety nets and climate early warning data systems. But we must bear in mind that success comes down to implementing these bold ideas, not just discussing them. We cannot afford business as usual when it comes to food systems and the livelihoods that depend on food production. We have been talking about the financing of the different efforts we have to undertake to have all these things brought together. In fact, that's how also we have arrived at, uh, even if it is not enough, uh, having the SDRs issue address, much as we are still saying it is not enough for Africa. It is enough, generally 60, 
650 billion dollars and part of that for Africa, 33 billion, we could still find other formulas to uh, have more of that. And I think those discussions have been going on. So around the Food Systems Summit later this month, all we can do is bring all the information together, all the efforts that have been underway uh, to better understanding and how to practically uh, tap into the different resources. But all that depends on uh, the political will, not only of some of those who hold the key to making those uh, resources available, but also the, those in need, those of us in need, uh, making the right demands and actually showing what it means uh, to the benefit of the, all of us.